In quad cities. I thought maybe 10 or 15 feet would go, but only on the outside. I never had any idea that would all go. Right now on Good Morning Quad Cities, we are following the Sunday night building collapse that happened in Davenport. What the warning signs one contractor had hours before the building's imminent collapse. Plus, families still without loved ones. The efforts to find them and the relief headed to those displaced. And good morning, Quad Cities. It is Friday, June 2nd. I'm David Bowman. I'm Devin Brooks. And I'm meteorologist Morgan Strachbein in for Andrew Stutsky. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Definitely a, uh, well, it's it's a warmer morning out there than it is in this building. That's, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. It's a bit frigid in here. Yeah. But we'll get to the weather in just a moment. We do want to continue tracking the ongoing developments of Sunday night's apartment building collapse in Davenport. We begin with the latest developments there. And you need to know on the Davenport building collapse, the city saying that as of this morning, it has requested help from the Iowa Emergency Operations Center for recovery operations. Crews continued searching the property yesterday. And meanwhile, shoring materials and heavy rescue and removal equipment is arriving on on site and Davenport has released nearly a hundred reports concerning the building dating back to 2020 including in those reports are notices to vacate certain units structural assessments fire code failures among other issues back in February an engineering company hired by the building's owner Andrew Wold and the company is select structural deemed the building safe despite visible crumbling on the exterior of a load bearing wall Less than a week before the building collapsed, another report was conducted. In a report from May 24th from Select Structural, which was five days before the building collapsed, it says, in anticipation of these areas falling, the brick facade above the window should be secured. This is to keep the entire face of the building from falling away from bottom areas that come loose. Did that not cause you guys to pause and say that no one should live in this building? They're still investigating that. Um, if you look at the January report, it was a similar repair that was made back in January. So. Um, they're still looking at that, and, and we'll get those answers. Believe me, the investigation, we're as interested as anybody else. Now, Mayor Mike Matson says that there are more questions than answers right now in the investigation. However, many in the community remain frustrated that the city appeared to wait for the building to collapse to deem it unlivable. Now, a contractor who bid on a project to make repairs on the building is sharing his experience with the owner. Yeah, News 8's Jenna Webster explains the dire warning the contractor gave days and then again hours before the building collapsed. You can just see it dropping. Looking at what's left of the Davenport apartment building, Ryan Schaefer can't say he's surprised. Each time I came over, it was worse. He co-owns RA Masonry and first met building owner Andrew Wold back in February. Andrew contacted us to give him a bid on the back of the building to repair the exterior masonry that was crumbling and falling. Our bid was to support the building all the way up, uh, replace the section of wall on the inside that was missing, and then uh, redo the facade of the brick on the outside. Schaefer says Wold rejected the bid because the cost was too high. And Schaefer's company walked away. It's not a safe thing to do if you're not doing it right. In the days leading up to the collapse. There was water just dumping out of the downspout. Schaefer watched as a different company worked on the repairs. I don't know where that water even came from. It hadn't rained in a week. Watching bricks fall and glass shatter. There's a whole strip of windows all the way up, all of them shattered. and blew out on Saturday and again Sunday just hours before the collapse warning what might happen get away from there you're gonna die he was right up against the building bricks are falling but he never predicted it would happen like this building just collapsed I thought from where the brick is cracked off here I thought maybe 10 or 15 feet would go but only on the outside I never had any idea that would all go even now looking at the building Schaefer worries what might happen next I don't know how this right corner has a fallen four days later still no promise that it won't Schaefer wondering what impact he left in Davenport Jenna Webster WQAD News 8 well, Davenport city crews have been moving the barriers around the collapsed apartment building. This is the latest effort to keep everyone safe. We're told from the possibility of a larger collapse. Instead of limiting traffic on Harrison, they're reopening two lanes of traffic. That was the first time in a couple of days the intersection has been fully open to traffic. And yesterday, a third missing person has been identified, Daniel Preen. The city now working with the VA to try to locate him, joining Brandon Colvin and Ryan Hitchcock, who have been missing since Sunday. 
The city says it's been a nonstop search to find them. It wasn't uncommon for him not to check in. And again, we have, are having a challenge getting actual family members of him um, located. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a challenge, but we understand that that is where his apartment is. And two previously unaccounted for people have been located. One tenant actually moved to Texas about a month ago. The other was located in Davenport. The city of Davenport is giving $6,000 in aid to each household displaced from the collapsed building. Households in adjacent buildings can get $1,000. The city is also offering $25,000 to businesses that were in the building and $5,000 for businesses at adjacent buildings. We know what the intent is, but we want to make it as flexible as possible so you can spend it on rent, clothing, food, anything you need. In city council ratification of this next week, we're mobilizing now, anticipating that so that maybe by later next week, we'll be able to start rolling out some of the assistance. You can apply for the aid tomorrow at an event hosted by the Red Cross. It'll be at the downtown Davenport YMCA from 10 to 4. And if you would like to pitch in and help those impacted by this building collapse, you can text the word donate to the number on your screen. That number is 309 304-0888. Make sure you text that number. Don't call it. You can also visit our website for all of this information, and that is WQAD.com. All right, time is 436. The hot weather is expected to continue today with temperatures in the 90s. Let's get a check of the first forecast with meteorologist Morgan Schreckbein. Hey, Morgan. Hey, Devin, and good morning, everyone. Yeah, yesterday, definitely hot, a bit humid. Today's going to be the same thing. Highs actually hit 94 degrees here in the Quad Cities yesterday. A lot of areas along I-80 into the south in the 90s to the north in the upper 80s. Right now, temperatures, again, quite mild to start the day. Even a little more milder than yesterday morning. We're at 71 here in the Quad Cities, 70 up in Savannah, 65 in Galesburg. Again, today we are going to still feel the effects of the humidity a little bit. So we're basically going to hit copy and paste from yesterday. And we're also going to track in a couple chances of showers and storms. Right now we have this nice little cell forming over the Quad Cities. In fact, uh, giving uh, enough strength to produce a little bit of lightning there as well. But again, that's really the only rain that we see in the area uh, for us at least. There's a couple of showers and storms off to the south and to the north and west. But again, most of us are going to stay fairly dry through most of the morning. It won't be until once again the late afternoon hours that we really start to see those pop up showers and storms. Once again, we are going to talk about the upcoming weekend and when you can expect the humidity to drop down. That's all coming up in your accurate forecast. Just a few minutes away, David. All right, Morgan, thank you. In eastern Iowa, it was unusually a dry May and farmers say that it's actually have an impact on their crops this morning. Farmer Brian Hora says that his crops are growing, but these hot days that we've been having have been putting stress on corn and soybeans. He says that normally they don't see drier weather like this until at least July or August. Usually you get a break from it. It's one of those where we've just had several years in a row where we've really been kind of hurting for water here, um, southeast Iowa for um, mid, mid to late summer. And it's just, uh, it's a little concerning to see it happen this early. And he adds that while he does have crop insurance, he'd much rather see the season through and be able to harvest in the fall. A newly signed Iowa bill is restricting the state auditor's ability to conduct audits. It's now preventing the state auditor Rob Sand from accessing records like income tax returns, criminal files and investigative reports from law enforcement. State senators backing the bill say this protects sensitive personal information. The state auditor expressing concern, saying insiders will play fast and lose with Iowa's tax dollars. Another bill Governor Reynolds signed is mandating Iowa's caucuses be done in person. Iowa Democratic Party is opposing that because it goes against what they have planned for the next year. In an effort to be more inclusive, Iowa Democrats say that they were hoping to provide party members with a remote option. A $2.1 million project to upgrade a Channel Cat dock is now complete. Metrolink leaders say the upgrades to the dock at John Deere Commons make it safer and more accessible for riders. Those upgrades include ramps, wider walkways, and more signage. The funding comes from federal grants. And it is now 439 on your Friday morning. Still had a twist of creativity. Who's helping some local students learn some serious salon skills? 
And we are going to continue to track in some pretty hot conditions through the upcoming weekend. But when and if we can expect a little bit of a cool down, we'll talk about that in your accurate forecast next. You're watching Good Morning Quad Cities on WQAD News 8.